Come on. Almost there. Um, hang on. I've just seen something, guys. Okay, we found another one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 12 of my Stormworks career mode Let's Play. At the moment, we're on our way to do a mission, which is actually to um, extinguish a fire at the sea fort. So we're going to do that now, and it's quite a long way away. I was going to use the big red boat to do that because the deck is very high and we do have to fire water over a pretty high wall actually. Um, however, it was 12 and a half kilometers and one, that boat is, it is just about fast enough to get there because we only have half an hour to get there. Um, but it was going to be very, very expensive to do that as well because we'd have to go pretty much full power the whole way. And yes, it would cost thousands and we'd make nothing out of it. So what I decided to do is bring this boat along, but give it a few upgrades as well. Now first of all you'll notice that I have actually changed the colour of this boat. It now has triple stripes on the deck instead of two. And we've gone for a sort of two tone colour scheme here, black and red. Now here on the bow is a new fluid cannon and that is of course because we are going to be extinguishing a fire in a few moments. And then just behind my seat guys you'll see I have uh, some firefighting equipment there. And then here behind that outfit I've actually kept my scuba diving gear here because that is really useful to have on any boat at any time. But there are some more upgrades guys of course and you'll tell by the sound of this boat I have actually upgraded the engines from six small diesel engines to two medium engines and I can show you that in the hole right now. Um, it's very red in here so <laughs> it should be pretty visible but there we go two medium engines and actually they output exactly the same power as what we had before however they are a bit lighter and that is one really good thing I've also guys I've taken out all of the fluid tanks that we had in here because earlier on this boat was used to transfer fuel um, and of course I don't need that now so the tank that was up here has now completely gone and I had two large custom tanks at the back as well. They have also gone, of course. So we're now much, much lighter. We've got more air in the hull. Um, same amount of power, but it sounds better. Now, if we go underwater, I've changed both of the propellers here. And I know it might not be that visible right now, so I might show you in the workbench at some point. But here we go. Here's the propellers. Um, they are now ASI propellers. Two of those instead of four small propellers. And the reason I've done that is because the other propellers are so noisy and they make this awful unrealistic noise. I don't know why, but uh, you know, I have nothing against those propellers in general. The small propeller is really, really good, but that noise it makes um, is just, yeah, I don't like it at all. So <laughs> I've gone for super quiet ASI thrusters and the, yeah, the top speed is exactly the same. The performance is exactly the same, if not even faster actually. I'm able to achieve about 54 knots using a bit of trim at the back, so that's really good actually. Um, and handling is good at that speed as well. Of course at max throttle it does drink a lot of fuel, so I'm not typically going to do that unless I need to to get from A to B uh, in a certain amount of time. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's plenty fast enough. And now it has the ability to extinguish fires. So that's what we're going to do right now guys. However, first I just want to show you some research that I've done. Now actually, I have just finished research on the advanced sensors, so that's really cool. Um, and I've just started research on custom doors next, I'm sure we're going to use that at some point. So that's on the way and it has about 57 minutes to go, that's fine. Uh, we have 47 points at the moment and we have nearly $88,000, that hopefully will be going up soon. So with all that being said guys, I'm going to head over to the sea fort now and show you how I'm going to extinguish that fire. Right then guys, we're here, and well, we're, we're one kilometre away at the moment. Now if we have a look at the map, um, the fire is here of course. I'm going to put my boat there, and well approximately there, and that's going to allow us to get over this wall. I find if I put my boat over here, it's very tricky for me to, uh, to reach the fire. So I'm going to go around the other side, and that's going to be much easier. If we were using the big red boat, it may not matter or it may be different. But this particular boat and other boats of a similar size will probably find that this area over here is much easier. So here we are, 150 meters away that fire is. And, well, we can't see it from here because it's inside the walls, but we will see it in a minute. So that's where I'm going to put the boat, just over there, near where the waypoint is. And then I'm also going to explain another feature which I've added to this boat. And, um, oh... 
wrong wrong button. <laughs> that was the clutch. Okay. Lovely. That's pretty good. Bit close to the rock there. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually keep that engine going. So guys, I've actually added another feature to this boat, which I didn't mention before, and that is a generator. Because when we're using the fluid cannon there and the pump inside the bow, that's going to use up electric power, of course. And when the battery starts to lose charge, the actual uh, the water stream will get shorter and weaker as well. So we, of course, we don't want that. We need maximum power for this job here. So I'm just going to use my arrow keys. And as you can see, we're now moving the fluid cannon on the bow there. Angle it in roughly the right direction. Then I press 1 to uh, to turn it on. So now I'm going to go into third person view so you guys can see that I'm actually very <laughs> almost reaching that fire already. And just do some fine adjustments here. And we may hit it in a minute. There we go. Oh, it's reducing. It's reducing, guys. Come on. It's almost out. It just takes some fine adjusting and uh, and it should be fine. We may have to reposition the boat if we're not quite in the right area. Trying to lower it down there. There we go. I think it's I think we're suppressing it. Not easy to do, is it? So if we were on the other side of the fort, I'd be firing the water a bit too far and it just wouldn't work quite so well. So what I'm going to do, guys, is actually turn off the water and I'm going to reverse a tiny bit. Just like that. Actually, that might be too far. Oh my goodness, is that too far or is it alright? Yep, I didn't expect that to go so far. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go forwards again. Still going backwards. There we are. Now that that's hopefully going to put us in a really good position. There we are. It's just... Yeah. Okay, we're basically on the fire right now. That's it, that's it. The flames are reducing. Come on. Almost there. Oh, it's out, it's out. Come on, it's almost out. Yes, we did it. Okay, <laughs> six points. Eight and a half thousand. We got more for that than we did for the tanker mission, actually, which is pretty good. Very nice. Okay, guys. I mean, I suppose the uh, the block that we got there was not that exciting, was it? So we actually got some logic blocks as well, which is just not very useful to us right now, to be honest. Uh, but that's fine. See, we actually, we've got 100% battery after all that work, so that's good. And I'm going to reposition the fluid cannon there, which doesn't really matter. But we'll do that anyway. Okay, then. So now that's done, I thought we'd do a bit of exploring before we head back home. And um, there is a wind farm up here, which we haven't been before, so I'm wondering if there's any crates we can find on there or anything else. Um, where else have we got to go here? I mean, there's something over there. Let's have a look on the map. So this area is all covered up at the moment. Maybe I'll go east, just to the waypoint, just to uncover this area, and then we'll go north onto the wind farm here and see what we've got on there. So I've been thinking about what we can do next, guys, and I've got a few ideas, actually. So there are a number of options to... Well, the options are pretty much infinite, aren't they, <laughs> to be honest, in this game. But um, one option is to go to the Arctic. Another option I have is to buy a brand new island, actually. And I've got this idea about buying the... You know the base with the cave that you can go in and build vehicles inside the cave? Um, and also you can build buildings on top of it as well. I'm thinking about buying that and maybe building a submarine under there. Another option would be to build some kind of hydrofoil boat as well. And of course, I have got a brand new project that I'm working on at the moment, guys. And I'll show you that. I'll show you the progress on that in a minute. And I've made some upgrades to the big red boat as well. So I'll show you guys that uh, shortly in the video. But yeah, um, a hydrofoil, which I've never built before. I could even convert this to a hydrofoil. Also, I could start thinking about building a helicopter or a plane as well, guys. So let me know what you think. Um, I've, I mean, we'll probably get round to doing all of these things anyway, and I'm not sure exactly when the next major update is going to come out. So when that update comes out, guys, we may have to actually uh, start a brand new game. It might be a good idea to do that anyway, because there, there might be a few bugs and glitches associated with this world, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, we'll probably do that anyway. Um, but we can always bring along our old uh, creations and make new ones for that world as well, of course. 
So yeah, if we don't have enough time to carry out all our plans before the next major update releases, we can carry them over into Season 2 and that is not a problem at all. Now if we have a look in the mission panel here, you'll see that I've only got one mission left to do and that is the same one that we saw in the previous episode. Um, it has no timer, so we can do that whenever we like and I'll choose a good moment to do that, but we probably won't do it this episode. But as you can see, now we have $96,500, that's really useful. And I'm probably going to have to make a bit more money if we are going to buy an island, guys. Research is now 43 minutes away, and we'll just carry on getting everything that we can. But if we are going to the Arctic soon, I will of course, um, you know, get the heater, the uh, the outfit, and, and all the rest of it. Right then, so here is the wind farm, guys. I'm going to just go over there, and I'm probably going to stop in this bay, which is where my waypoint is right now. I'll just show you on the map where that is, just down here. I don't know if it's the best place to stop, but I'm going to go up there, uh, park the boat in this bay, and then just have a bit of an explore around, and hopefully, guys, we can find a crate or two on here. Okay. This looks to be a nice bay, actually. Uh, we'll just stop right at the entrance. There we go. Now, I don't really expect to find anything better than a crate or two here. Um, I don't think you can find anything else. Um, you can actually find treasure chests in the game, guys. But they are normally underwater, as far as I'm aware. I've never found one on land before. And you can find those near the shipwrecks. So, yeah, if you're interested, guys, explore some shipwrecks. And, guys, if we do build an island with a submarine, we could actually use that submarine to go and explore shipwrecks and then find treasure chests underwater. Which would be very, uh, very interesting to do. I've only ever found one before. And um, to be honest, I haven't looked for them very much before. But that should be pretty interesting. Alright then, let's go exploring. Unfortunately, I have not found any crates at all. I found nothing of interest, really. I mean, it is pretty cool to come here and just have an explore around. It's, it's very interesting. And actually, you know, the views here are incredible. I mean, look at this. Look at this place. It's just amazing, really. Um, but I cannot see any crates. No loot at all, unfortunately. And these things, you can't climb up. Um, of course, you can actually land on them with a helicopter, which I've done a few times. Which is pretty good fun. But yeah, you can't climb up them. So I'm going to just have a look over in this area, guys. And if I don't find anything, well, that'll be that. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. Well, that's a great shame, guys. We found nothing at all. Um, the boat is just down there in that bay. So, I'll just have one last look here, but... Yeah, it doesn't look like we've got anything at all, does it? That is a real shame. It's such a big island as well. What's that down there? Is that a building? Okay, I just need to see what that is. Because I'm not sure I've ever seen that before. Oh, it is a building. That's cool. Okay, well... Let's go in. I've got no idea if anything's in here. Ah, oh, what a shame. <laughs> just an empty box. However, it is quite interesting to come in here and just have a look, see what's uh, see what's going on. But yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> it's a fail, guys. We haven't found anything here at all. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is head back to base. I'm going to get some fuel on the way off camera. Um, hang on, I've just seen something, guys. Look at that on the left. Yeah, we <laughs> we found one. Okay, not on the island, but still, let's go over there and get it. And then I'll explain what I'm going to do while we're on the way to that. Yep, so I'm going to head back to base now, guys. And I'm going to get some fuel on the way. Then I'm going to show you the new boat, which is now on stage 2. And it is actually working as well, guys. So I've taken it for a spin, and it works fairly well in the initial stages of that build. And I'm going to show you the big red boat as well. I've made some upgrades to that one. Um, let me just stop here. And let's see what we get for this crate. Right, can we reach it? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Okay, six points and nearly $5,000. That's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. I'll take that. Well, we didn't find any more islands down here to buy, but we do have some options already. What is this island? Ah, now guys, 
Is that the island where we can build on but also build a submarine inside with that with a cave? Okay, so we're going to go and find out about this island. We'll find out how much it costs and if it's the one I'm thinking of before we head back to base. And then we can make a decision about if we're going to buy it. Okay, we found another one just on the left over here. Let's go and get that. Oh, I'm, I'm very happy about that. So not only were we very lucky in the last episode, but also this one as well, it seems. Let's go and get it. Very good. 6,000 this time. I mean, finding those crates is really handy, not just because... I mean, it pays for expenses, right? So it pays for our diesel and more. Um, for this whole... It would have paid for four full tanks of diesel, that, uh, that crate that we just got right there. But at the same time, they're going to actually add to our overall amount of money and help us to buy islands and bigger boats and things. Now that there is the observatory, and that is what we're going to have to use the big red boat for when we get a fire on that thing, because, <laughs> yeah, it's... Well, from my experience, it's not easy to do with a smaller boat. So yeah, we'll use that. And luckily, guys, it's not far away from the Isle of Donk where we are based at the moment. So um, it's not going to be super expensive to take the boat over there and extinguish that fire. And also, I don't know what the time limit will be for that, but say it's half an hour, we should be close enough um, in that sense as well. So here is the observatory near where we buy and sell the jet fuel. And then, of course, up here is the uh, the island where we're based so it's not too bad in fact if we just set a waypoint here it's about eight kilometers from our current position so that should be fine okay so we have our diesel and now we're going to head over to this island which is not very far away and we're going to see how much it costs um, and if it's the one that I was thinking of initially anyway because it might not be but I think it is so let's go and have a look um, and I might not buy it right now because we may not have enough money or at least we may not have enough money left over after purchasing but we will certainly aim towards it I don't think it's super expensive but it may be about a hundred thousand so we'll have to find out in a minute let's do a quick top speed run shall we to, to get over there What's that we are we're on the limiter right now so we okay whoa okay let's uh, let's cut that down so again, it's similar to before. I think it is a bit faster. Um, but of course, we were jumping out the water. I mean, with a bit of trim, as I say, I can get around 54 knots. But you do want to be careful, because if you're jumping out the water, I'm using water cooling. And yes, the, the temperatures could rise quite high. And then, of course, the engines would blow up. So that is definitely not what we want to do. But this is the island. Now, as you can see up there, guys, there is a workbench. Hopefully you can see that anyway. And that means that we can build bases, static objects, on that island. But is it the one with the cave where we can actually build inside this as well? So we're just going to circle the island quickly. It is getting quite dark now, actually. So, yeah, we won't be spending too long here. But we're going to just circle around it. If it has a cave, then I'm going to go and find out the price. If it doesn't then, well, you guys might be interested anyway, I suppose, in the price, so we can stop by and have a look. There we go, There you can you can definitely buy it up there. And there's the uh, structure workbench, yeah. So I don't think it's the right one, I'm afraid. However, let's go and see how much it costs anyway. Right, so here's the workbench, guys, and here is the, okay, 100,000. Yeah, and it's not even the one we wanted. I mean, it's still pretty cool, actually, but yes, we're not going to buy this one. We are going to buy the submarine, I call it the submarine island anyway, I don't know what it's actually called. But so uh, yeah, I'm going to buy the one with the cave in, because you can actually build in the cave, and there's two workbenches on top as well, I think. This one is going to have to stay here, and we'll save our money for the other one. Now guys, we are heading home, however, I think I've just found the island that we're looking for. And it's actually just near our base, <laughs> I can't remember if I saw it before. But there is our base terminal spike eggs. And just over here is what I believe to be the island we want. I really am pretty sure it's this one. So yeah, I'll head over here as well and we'll check that one out. See how much it costs and if it is indeed the right one. Look, we found another crate on the way back. That's really, really good. Um, uh, the thing is, I'm not expecting anything interesting in terms of components that you get from these anymore because we normally seem to get just buttons or logic and it's pretty boring isn't it however you never know we could get something interesting so let's find out and again just you know logic it's a bit weird i don't know if that's some kind of bug or if it's just meant to be that way now 
but it's not very exciting. But 12 research points is very, very good. And a bit of money as well. Yes, all right, guys. So I found a big hole here on the top of this island. And um, yeah, that sorry it's so dark, by the way. But that means that we, uh, we are at the right island. This is the one that I actually want to buy. Um, now, to find the other workbench, I'm going to actually jump down here. It's probably going to hurt, okay, but we won't die. Oh, ouch, okay, yeah, 50% health, okay, we're all right. Now, yes, I appreciate it's very dark and not very nice for you guys, <laughs> but here is one workbench, and that is a structure workbench, so you can build, you know, buildings and stuff, and here is the vehicle workbench, and we're currently inside a cave right now. If we look on the map, you can see me, I'm actually inside this island. Um, but yeah, that's where I'd love to build a submarine, so... That looks really, really promising. Now let's go and find out where the other workbench is and where we can actually buy this island. Okay, we found it, guys. Island for sale. And here is the other workbench, which we haven't seen yet. Um, how much is this one, then? Okay, 100,000. It's a lot of money. But actually, considering how good it is, I don't mind too much. But we're going to now potentially work towards this, guys. Let me know if you want me to go to the Arctic, if you want me to buy this um, and build a submarine. You know, build a base on it as well. I'd love to hear all your suggestions on that. But now let's head back to base and have a look at the two boats that I've been working on. Okay, guys, we're back home at base now. We're in the workbench as well. And this is the boat that we've just been using. Um, so, you know, the propellers that I couldn't quite show you earlier because it was so dark are here. And everything else I think you guys have probably seen by now. Um, I did also add a couple of spotlights on the front, just very basic ones here that don't move around. But that's it, yeah, that's the, the new version of the boat for extinguishing fires. Now, we are still going to use these older boats as well, guys, as well as the new ones. Um, just, you know, as and when we need them. They all have a specific purpose, so, you know, yeah, we'll just get them out whenever we need them, really. Um, but the next thing I'm going to show you is the new boat. And here she is, guys. Now, there is some kind of a bridge or a cabin up front. We've got a spotlight on top. It does work. Um, this thing, well, I'll, I'll explain in a minute about the power and the speed. But this thing is currently powered by fluid jets. And you can actually turn very, very sharply with these. Almost, um, you can basically do donuts in the water with them. It's just amazing. Now, guys, if we get up close to one of these water jets, you'll see that um, there are two deflectors, one on the left and the right-hand side, and that is actually how you turn and how you reverse. So if you want to turn, one of the deflectors will move. If you want to reverse, you move both of them into the middle. Um, yeah, and you basically, uh, you can reverse like that. So you don't even need a reverse gear as such. But uh, that's really interesting, and that's one of the reasons I love these things. But I will have to learn how to get that to work properly. So at the moment, this boat does work. It moves forwards, but it doesn't reverse just yet. Now, here is the pilot house. And uh, yeah, I've got a couple of windows up there. Very, very basic, quite similar to what I normally do. And of course, it's only work in progress at the moment. But I've got a couple of doors here. Now, in the hull, guys, I've actually got three medium engines here. But not only that, I've also put a medium electric motor as well. Now, with the motor and the engines, we can get about, well, 45 to 50 knots at the moment. As we get heavier, that is going to slow down a bit, but we might find ways of improving the power and the gearing as well to counter that. So I, I think this boat's probably good for about 40 knots when it's finished, which is very good. But, um, you know, it is important to have good fuel economy as well. So we'd have to keep both of those things in mind. Generator above, which is on a 3 to 1 gear ratio as well, I think. Let's check that. 2 to 1. 2 to 1 seemed to be the best then, I suppose. We have a few large fuel tanks up here. Now, I may make a custom tank eventually, but that's just, you know, a very quick job just to get things going there, and it works very well indeed. Um, one large battery at the stern, and that's because of this electric motor here. We do want to have at least one, you know, very large battery to support it. But for the moment, guys, that is it. That's where we've got with this boat. Now, um, do let me know if you have any ideas or suggestions on what we can use this boat for. Any particular missions, if you want cranes on it. Um, let me know, guys, because at the moment, I suppose I'm not really sure what I'm building this boat for. I was going to build it to extinguish fires and things. But then I found out that actually using that smaller boat that we just used before in the previous mission... That's better because it's uh, it's faster, it's lighter, it's cheaper, it's cheaper to fill up, it goes further. So at the moment, I'm not quite sure what to do with this boat. I'm sure there will be some good uses for it. But yeah, so please, uh, please do let me know if you've got any ideas or suggestions on that side of things. 
Okay, what we're going to do next is go to the big red boat and, uh, and see what I've done on that one. Okay, there she is, and I've got a few improvements to talk about. Now, first of all, I've added some windows up here uh, above the uh, above the bridge, and yes, that is going to be allowing a bit more lighting, which is nice, but also it makes it a bit lighter, um, especially right at the top of the ship. It's quite good to have uh, a bit of weight reduction up there. So that is helping two issues there, weight and light. Um, but also we have now a solar strip at the back, and yes, it's not very big, it's not going to be very powerful, but, you know, if the boat is out um, out in the water for quite a long time, that will make some kind of difference, and it might just help us if we get stuck in a, in a sticky situation. So that's uh, a little improvement there. Now, guys, what I've done next is I've actually used uh, the wing block, which we unlocked recently, um, to save loads of weight all over the boat. And I have tested this boat when using the wing block, and actually, you know, handling is fine, so it doesn't seem to have interfered uh, with this boat, you know, the handling, uh, the physics and all that, so it seems all right. But if I just get the arrays tool out here, you can see where I've positioned them so far. Now, I haven't done the entire ship because I was, as I say, a bit worried just about the uh, the performance of them because they may you know as far as I know they actually uh, generate a bit of lift because they're wing blocks and I, I really have no idea about that but anyway I've put them all along here they're saving a ton of weight here and they're all along here I don't know if I've put them anywhere else in this deck as far as I remember that might be the only place that I've put them so far but of course I did want to put them on the flooring inside as well so then hopefully we won't be bumping up and down when we're walking on the floor but what I've also done, guys, is a bit of weight reduction here with wedges as well. So I put wedges all the way along. We've literally saved so much weight, guys, by putting these wedges in and the wing blocks as well. Now, as I say, guys, I haven't reduced weight across the whole ship yet. That's still to come. But what I have done has enabled us to achieve at least a whole extra knot on top speed already. So that's really promising stuff there. And it's also cheaper to use wedges as well. So yeah, that's the weight saving that we've made and the effects on the top speed. But now if we go down into the hull, guys, you'll see I've added an electric motor here. Now again, just like that quick response boat that we've seen before, um, this thing here actually adds quite a bit of top speed. And in fact, it propels the boat on its own between 9 and 11 knots. Um, of course, that reduces quickly because the battery power goes down <laughs> quite fast as well. But again, it's just really to increase top speed, not so much efficiency. So we can get from A to B quicker if we need to. But also, you know, if we run out of diesel or if something happens to the engines, we can use this to get us to safety and it will take us a few kilometers if we're careful with it. So that's good, it's a safety feature, but also it will enable us to travel a bit faster if we need. And what it does is in the efficient gear on this boat, it'll actually take me to around 22 knots, I believe, which is not bad, it's not bad at all, from 17 to 22. And with a bit more weight reduction, you know, we might be going even faster than that. But guys, that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And do let me know if you want me to buy the island and build a submarine or go to the Arctic or do a... Or, I mean, we'll probably do everything anyway. But, you know, let me know what you guys really want to see or anything else that I haven't even thought of yet. Also, if you've got any suggestions for um, uses for the new boat, uh, let me know that as well. Um, but until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.